welcome to the Brock Interview Series with host Thomas S. Orwatt Jr. Welcome to episode number 60 of the Rock Interview Series. I'm Thomas Orwatt Jr. It is August 21st, 2022. And for this feature, I have Robbie Takak, bass player, singer, songwriter, and co-founder of the multi-platinum selling chart top and rock band from Buffalo, New York, the Goo Goo Dolls. During this exclusive interview, Robbie talks about the Goo Goo Dolls' new record, Chaos and Bloom, the band's current summer tour, past history, future plans, and its upcoming Music is Art Festival, which takes place on September 10th at the Buffalo River Works in Buffalo, New York. So here he is, Robbie Takak. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Rock Interview Series. We have uh, episode number 60 today. So uh, to celebrate 60 episodes, I thought uh, we would bring in the coolest rock star on the face of the earth, uh, founding member of the Goo Goo Dolls, and um, the mastermind behind the coolest music festival in Buffalo, New York, Music is Art, Mr. Robbie Takak. How are you today, Robbie? Doing good. Excuse me, doing good. Just uh, woke up here in Philadelphia. We were in uh, uh, at Jones Beach last night, which was awesome. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to spend a little time wandering around the uh, windy streets of Philly and then uh, go do a rock show tonight. So everything's good. Yeah, I mean, you guys have so many like really eventful things that have occurred with the band over the last you know, a couple months. Uh, let, let's get started with, first of all, the tour that you're on right now. It, it took, it was two years in the making. Um, you guys are about halfway through the first leg of the tour. I saw you guys in uh, the Detroit area on August 7th, and it was, a, again, a brilliant show. And I've I've seen the Doobie Dolls probably more than any other band on the face of the earth. I mean, being that I'm from Buffalo, New York, and being sure. the fact that, you know, I, I absolutely love you guys, you know, since 1990 when I, you know, first saw you guys at the Sky Room. Oh, and actually, that's not even true. The first time I saw you guys was at the um, uh, We Killed McKinley show at Buff State. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I believe 1989. I mean, I'm sure. Do you remember that show at all? I do remember that show. Yeah, we, yeah. Backed, up, well, we backed up Peachy Lamar at that show. Yeah, right, right. I remember yeah. that. It was, it was really. <laughs> and you guys weren't even the headliners at the time. But you, you know, obviously blew everyone away. And it's like, what the hell? Who's that band? And then from there, I was like, you know, that that's mm -hmm. that started it. But um, get get back on what I was saying before. My only criticism with the Goo Goo Dolls show is, and um, you know, I hate to you know bring something negative here, is but your show is so good that there is no time to urinate. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I've been to like you know so many shows this summer, and there's always like a time like when I saw like Def Leppard on the stadium tour. Okay, we're gonna play a new song, and then it's like a mass access to the. the uh, bathrooms and you know get the 20 ounce drinks both you guys when you play new songs people want to actually hear them and that's you know that really sets you apart yeah you know i think the thing i uh, uh, uh regarding bathroom visitations <laughs> <laughs> I, I think with this band it's 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 you know some people uh you, you know like don't know the old stuff so they'll take that opportunity some people you know just can't understand why i have a microphone so they take that opportunity you know like you, you know so like <clears throat> There's a lot of good opportunities to uh, nick nicturate. You like that word? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 during the show, so you know, you, you just got to be creative. But you know, I mean, the thing that we find the hardest now, or or that I find the hardest at least, um, is you know, every year it's hard to put a show together because we have so many songs that we'd love to play, and every year we add more. And we want to play those songs. And so it becomes harder and harder. I mean, this is like pretty much the definition of a first world problem, right? But, you know, we can't play all the songs we want to play because we just can't physically do it. You know, I mean, we're not, we're not the kind of band, like when we go out there and leave 90 minutes on the stage, like we've left 90 minutes on that stage, man. We're just not out there wandering around playing our songs for people, you know, like, I mean, we're like making it happen. And so our, we're doing about a little over a hundred minutes on, on this tour. And, but I don't think we could do much longer than that, quite honestly, just every night, night after night, playing as much as we do. So, you know, it's really, we got to go through and figure out what are we going to do? What songs are we going to play? You know, what are we going to, 
kind of leave behind. I mean, like we're leaving behind top 10 songs right now. You know, it's kind of a crazy thing. But, um, you know, uh, these summer tours are all about playing as many hits as you can for people. And so that's what we try to do during the summers. And then when we get back into the theaters in the fall and spring and such, you know, we'll have a little bit uh, deeper reach into the catalog, you know, and I think, you know, not, we're trying to satiate as many people as we possibly can at these shows, you know, you know, we're still presenting the show that goes to, to all the places that we want it to go. So. Yeah. The, the, the question that I get um, after I see the Goo Goo Dolls from, from uh, friends is what songs didn't they play? Because, you know, there's, there's songs. I mean, like you said, you have so many, you know, top 10 hits, you know, it, it would be impossible to ever pull in like a, a new song. And then the new songs in the top ten too. So I mean, you're right. It is a it is a major dilemma. And then there are some songs that you're you're not going to play. And it's like, that must really be difficult to decide when you're coming up with that set list. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it becomes an issue when we're trying to put it together because you know you really want to. Uh, like I said, you want to. You don't want anybody leaving going, man. I really want to hear and play that song. You know, like you want to try to, but you know, at the same time. You know, if you don't reach out and do some different things, you know, then this gets pretty boring, you know, along the way as well. So I think, you know, you need to find that happy medium, you know, uh, you know, between uh, uh, keeping the band interested and keeping the fans interested. And I know that sounds a little uh, maybe narcissistic or something. I don't know, you know, like that, you know, you would have to worry about keeping the band happy while they're up there. But quite honestly if, if you're not up there and feeling like you're moving forward you know you, it, you don't have that same feeling you know that we've always had and um so you know we definitely got to keep that in the mix right now in order to keep things vital i think yeah uh, there are a lot of bands that, that have done that where it's just like we're just gonna play the songs that we like and you know and then you know and those shows yeah. usually those shows usually suck and the casual fans are bored and um, you know, nobody nobody's bored at a Goo Goo Dolls song. You guys definitely have. Have you guys changed off the set list at all? Uh, do, do you like um, add new songs? A little bit at the top of the tour, we changed out some songs until we we usually go a couple weeks with trying to figure out you know how the journey is, you know, <laughs> from beginning to end. And uh, but quite often, once we hit that stride and you can feel it when it happens you know um you know the show never dips below that point you know <laughs> and uh so you don't want to mess with it too much you know so at that point we'll go out and we'll play that show you know until we're inspired to move otherwise but like if the shows are great most of the time we'll just keep busting that set out for the rest of the summer yeah, what was uh, whose decision was it to, to lead off with the first single? I think that was a brilliant move. Yeah, I like you. It was a great song. It's it's the opening song on on the tour. Um, yeah. it really gets. I mean, everybody in Detroit, everybody was singing along already. To, I mean, everybody yeah. in that arena knows that song, knows every single word in that song, and it just sounds sound like a, a choir singing along to every word. It, it, yeah, I mean, we have a tendency to start our shows with the new single. Quite honestly, um, I don't know. Once again, if that'll be the case in the fall, but, um, you know, the summers, you know, I can remember, I can remember leading up, you know, it's funny, like if a song leads off an album, you know, it can most likely kick off a show and, uh, you know, you're a little nervous sometimes about playing a new single first, you know, especially when you're a band that's been around as long as us, you know, you know, for sure you can walk out and hit them with a song that everybody will know first, but, um, I don't know. It just feels good to step out and do something new. You know, it feels exciting and fresh. So yeah, and, and this this uh, leg that you're currently on will end um, on September 24th in Buffalo at Key Bank Center, which is going to be incredible, a capacity of like sixteen thousand plus. Um, it's been a while since you guys played there. I think last time you played there was on the Gutterflower tour, so it must be pretty cool. To well, actually. Yeah, you you open for Bon Jovi after that, um, there. But this is a, the first time you're headlining since Butterflower, so it must be nice to return there as a headliner. It's just nice to be in the city, um, you know, there in like you know, we've done some amazing, super fun shows there, 
but uh, um, it's nice to do something different. You know, it's nice to, you know, be able to just be within the city limits and, and feel like it's happening in the city. There's just something exciting about that. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, like you said, last time we were in there was with Bon Jovi and uh, it'd, it'd be nice to uh, see it happen again. That's for sure. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of people in Buffalo are are excited about that. Um, another thing about the venues that you've played in Buffalo is, you have pretty much played every single venue in Buffalo. Is that has that been a philosophy to go out of your way to you know make it everyone a chance, you know have a the host a Google Doll show? Because seriously, you have played pretty much a lot of the venues. Even if, even venues are way too small for the Google Dolls. You've been yeah, playing. yeah, we yeah we never played Mohawk Place. <laughs> no no we never played mohawk place we were a little too we we're we were, we were kind of out of the scene by the time mohawk place opened so um i've i've been there before I, I i i'm sure i've been on that stage doing something with somebody at some point but uh, google dolls have never played there um yeah but uh, most of the other ones for sure we've been to you know i mean obviously the newer ones you know rec room and stuff like that we haven't uh yeah uh done but you know we may have played in that room where the rec room was when it was something else down on Chippewa so I don't know who knows yeah uh the last time that you played in Buffalo right before the pandemic you played at Buffalo Riverworks um and that was for the Miracle Pill Tour and Rob Thomas was on that bill and again a venue that was you know really way too small to contain that that, that probably could have been at the arena to be quite honest with you well, what was the decision um, to play at such a small arena for that particular gig. It really wasn't even our show. That was a, a radio station show. You oh, know? Okay. So, yeah. So uh, they just asked us to come in and do it. And, uh, you know, we had been friends with Rob for years. So, you know, it just kind of fell together pretty easily. But it was a lot of fun to do, you know, kind of smash, smash the show into that little room. And, you know, yeah, it was great. It definitely brought back memories of the, uh, you know, old Goo Goo Doll shows, like at the Sky Room and the Continental, that's for sure, where it was like packed, you know, so many people and it looked, you know, it's like a half hour just to like get a beer and I mean, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't experience that part of it as much. <laughs> no, no I, I, I don't remember you like leaving the show to get a beer or anything like that. I remember one time I saw you guys, uh, you played a secret show with the, the Scrapyard and you were uh, doing all covers. It was when the Grateful Dead were in town. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You remember that? And, and Johnny was actually dressed up as Jerry Garcia. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I remember that. The funny thing was I, I was uh, I was on the... You know, he's, he's, I talked to John earlier that day and he, he put me on the guest list. And I, when I got there, they said there was no, I, there, I wasn't on the guest list. So I go, John, I go, well, I'm not on the guest list. He goes, yeah, you are. I wrote your name on my on my arm or on my hand. And he like shows him like, hey, that's him right there. And uh, you guys really don't do that anymore. You, you probably have like the people that take care of that, right? You know, right well, there. what, like the guest list and stuff? Yeah, you don't write down your hands anymore. Oh well, no. There's a there's a yeah. There's a process now. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. Like, we got we yeah. We have a great group of folks with you know that travel around with us. A lot of the a lot of the uh, crew has been with us for you know well over a decade at this point. You know, so we're uh, we're super fortunate. You know, to have a a really great system out here. So uh, so uh, you know, knock on wood that stays in place. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, as I was waiting um, for you, for you guys to come on stage, I was kind of, you know, walking around and I was looking at all of, all the semis and that, and I was just wondering how many people do you have actually working for the Goo, the Goo Goo Dolls, and and how many semis does it take to put on a show like this? We have three trucks mm -hmm. and uh, two trailers uh, and four buses on this tour. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, but and that's with Blue October as well. Yeah, and and then um like right before uh, you wanted right before the tour started, uh we had the whole issue with gas prices and everything, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, well, this is a horrible time to be a musician. I mean, it, it beats being like a regular person like myself. I mean, like tonight you're gonna go rock like seventeen thousand. I'm gonna mow the lawn, but uh you know, but but still, I mean, there's a lot of adversity that you guys had to face with the pandemic first, and then you know, gas prices and just like, it's like, it was like nonstop. Yeah. We, uh, we budgeted really high this year for gas, you know, um, 
So we actually we'll, we'll probably be kind of on mark, but yes, it's outrageously expensive, but I'll tell you the bands that it's, you know, really killing, you know, are the bands that, you know, are making it from club to club and, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, we have the means to be able to, you know, handle that. It, you know, it stinks, but we have the means to handle it. It's like, you know, the bands that are playing for $150 in their t-shirt money every night, you know, that's, that's a huge hit when the, when the, when, when the gas prices go up, you know, um, you know, they almost doubled, you know, since before yeah. the pandemic and, you know, man, it's tough, you know, it's tough for those bands, man. But uh, yeah, you know, it's rough, but I'll tell you, man, we were worried. We didn't know, we didn't know how, what it was going to be like, you know, when we came out, you know, some tours are stiffened, man. Um, but I don't know. It seems in our case, people really want to come out and see music and, uh, you know, thank God for that. Yeah. I think, you know, with the, the oversaturation of touring too, I think that definitely plays a role. I, I, you know, spent some time, you know, on Live Nation just checking out how, how bands are doing in some, you know, particular markets and that. And there are a lot of tickets available for a lot of bands, you know, like right up to showtime. And it's like, wow, how can they even afford to do this, you know? And but it's, yeah. it's just an oversaturation at this point because nobody's worked for like two years. Yeah. And everybody sat home writing, writing songs. And it's like, there's this like <laughs> glut of like uh, creativity and such. It's amazing. Um, like, uh, just sort of segueing here a little bit, like uh, you wouldn't believe how many bands applied for Music is Art this year. Like it was crazy. Like I think, I think people just had time, you know, to you know write songs and to get creative and to play with their Pro Tools and um, you know play with their video editing stuff and and work on their art and um, yeah. Now everybody's ready, you know, and. Uh, you know, and everybody's out there making it happen. And uh, so I think it's, uh, I think these next few years are going to be some pretty creatively exciting times. I really do. Like, like, you know, there's, there's been a few uh, silver linings to this whole thing happening, you know, the pandemic and such a, like a, I got to grow tomatoes for the first time, you know, like, uh, you know, um, I got to spend, you know, a couple whole summers with my daughter. I haven't ever done that, you know, cause that's summers when we make hay, you know? So, um, you know, so there were some exciting byproducts, but I think there's a lot of them that we haven't really experienced yet. Like, I don't think we've been able to recognize everything that's happened. And I think one of those things is, I think people really had some time, man, to sit and, get inside their heads man and 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 really explore their own uh place in things and i think the arts like figures into that so much uh so yeah i think we're going to see expl an, an explosion of 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 really really cool stuff coming up over the next couple of years just because of the time that we had you know to yeah. reflect yeah that, that, that was one of the things that when I interviewed you back in March of uh, 2021, um, I mentioned that I felt that the Goo Goo Dolls navigated through the pandemic probably better than any other band. And, uh, you know, we're still seeing the results from that. Um, Chaos and Bloom, your uh, newest record, your 14th studio record, was recorded during that time period. And I believe that when we were speaking in March of 2021, you guys were in the studio recording that the, that record mm. at that time, correct? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were out in Woodstock. Yeah. So, so was did, did you guys take an extra long time doing this record because of the pandemic? Because uh, it, it seemed like you know you guys were in the studio then, and then you got in the studio, you know, you know maybe like a year after that as well. Uh, that was largely due to the fact that John produced the record instead of uh, a producer. Producer will not spend two years making your record with you. Uh, but I think John was able to spend time this time and kind of ruminate on stuff a little bit more than he probably would have. Once again, I think this was one of those byproducts of the pandemic, you know, like we never, ever, I can guarantee you this, have been locked in a cabin in or, or in an old church in the woods making a record if there wasn't a pandemic out there, we would have been in New York or LA, like we always are working with all these different producers because we burn them all out. Like, 
it was just us sitting in the woods, you know, making records, us and the, the, the deer ticks, you know, like that's what it was. And, you know, so that record got, I think John kind of went as far as he thought he could with it. And when it came time to sing, you know, you, you know, he brought some of the folks who have helped us in the past, you know, kind of get over that part of it. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we, he got to spend that time, you know, you can't ask that of a producer because we have, and, <laughs> and we found you can't, uh, you know, they're not always, uh, you know, your relationship with them is not always the same at the end of the record as it is at the beginning. And, and, uh, you don't want to have that animosity, you know, when it comes to making a record. So, I mean, I think this one, you know, we were able to go in, spend an awful lot of time. All the ideas were born of like a bunch of dudes sitting in, in a room together. That hasn't happened in ages with us. And, but like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a silver lining, I think. Wow. And so was that the goal going into it or, or did you guys contemplate bringing in an outside producer? I mean, I don't know. I think John kind of planned. I, I mean, I guess the plan was there for the beginning. I don't know if, if we knew for sure that that was going to work. You know, I mean, John and I have co-produced records with pe many, many people, you know, but there was always someone in the room, you know. Now, mind you, we did have, you know, Brad helped out. Um, you know, I was there, you know, uh, Craig was there. Our engineer was there. You know, I mean, we are all people who would have made many records. So, you know, um, you know, I, I, I don't think he was producing on an island, you know, but um, but who knew? You know, I mean, there's usually somebody whose responsibility it is to pull this thing from from the beginning to the end. And so it was a, it was a you know, you know, it was it was a bit of an experiment, I guess. But, you know, I think uh, we we have probably another five, maybe six songs that are 80 percent finished already, too. They just don't have. uh you know, these need to be finished up. So assuming those will see the light of day at some point, we've got another half a record still of, of the same vibe. And it's funny, like the songs that we picked by no means were picked because we felt those were better songs. Like, and, and, and that's, I'm telling you that honestly, like, cause the songs weren't done when we, when we chose those 10 songs to finish, like we just sort of went, well, let's do these, you know, this sounds like a good record. And we sequenced the record with no lyrics, <laughs> like, and just said, okay, this is the record we're going to finish because, you know, we had to pull this over the finish line in order to get it out for this tour, which we did, you know, by the skin of our teeth, as always, you know, the, you know, give us three more minutes and it'll take us four more, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I, I think that the sequence of the record is, is, is really good. I mean, it, it plays, very very well from start to finish um and and with those other songs too i, I know that the, the goo goo dolls in in the past have kind of been a band that kind of writes songs for one record and then you, you the band evolves with every record also so i've always kind of felt that your philosophy was well we're going to start new again you know with, you know and can continue that way and, and it seems that that's the way it's been you know for the 14 records that you've released yeah absolutely and you know, even with the stuff that we've sort of started already, you know, I'm sure that from where they are right now, those ideas will take a journey as well. Like there were a couple songs on this record that were born of the Miracle Pill sessions, oh. but ne but never were really realized, you know, like they were discussed, sort of thrown around and just never made it into the final thing. So that happens often with records, you know, um, a little less with me. I tend to kind of throw absolutely everything out. Um, but, you know, like when we bring ideas in, like when I bring an idea in, I'll have a song that's pretty much like written. Um, for for this record and, and, and for the last couple records, John comes in with kind of a nugget of an idea. And, and so we sort of like move on from there so like the processes are a little different you know um uh but you know it feels like um we've sort of found a place right now 
you know, with this process that like allows us to have songs that begin with a little bit, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word here, uh, purity of process, I guess. Like, um, like the ideas feel like Gugadal songs that we're bringing somewhere as opposed to a collaborated song that we're, that we make a Gugadal song. Sometimes it started to feel like that with many producers coming in, John writing with an awful lot of people and stuff. Like, I think the process was just much more pure this time. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I think people are enjoying that, you know, it's been an awfully long time since you've had that vibe on a on, on one of our records well yeah if, if you go by what the critics are saying and the fans i mean i don't think i've read a negative review on it yet and there's there's always some d-bag that you know well i wish they could rock like they did back like in 1990 well screw off i mean they're like no uh, yeah. years older, you know it's like yeah i've read they, they, they progress as musicians you know i mean yeah. You know, it'd be like saying, I wish you could make, you know, uh, hamburgers at McDonald's like you did when you had your first job, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, but you know, people who say stuff like that, it's, it starts to sound like a broken record after a little while. It's like, dude, you've been saying that for 20 years, man. It's like, you know, like, like I said, I think that this record has more of those elements just naturally because we were just in a room playing guitars together, you know, like, you know, um, So I feel like this record is a little less. And I I surely do not want to discount our last records by saying this, but, uh, and I, and I really don't mean to, um, but I feel like this record is trying to be a little less. What is, (laughs) <laughs> and is trying to be a lot more like what's coming um right. you know uh i don't know if that makes any sense and we could be totally wrong you know like you know you know i mean you know we're 100 percent accurate 60 percent of the time you know like um <laughs> you know I, obviously you never know what's coming next but like this one just really feels like we just went you know what this is what these songs are supposed to sound like man I don't know what else to say. This is what, you know, this is what this record's supposed to be. And um, yeah. Yeah. Well, one, one of the songs I want to talk about, um, if you don't mind, is uh, Loving Life, a song that you sang lead vocals on. Um, can you just give us like, you know, some background on that particular song and, and, and you know, what the process was? That was a song that uh, you, you sang lead vocals on and you uh, yeah. wrote it with John. Yeah, it was a demo I did in Buffalo. Craig and I did. Um, it was just me playing all the instruments. Actually, I, actually, interestingly enough, that demo will be available on the vinyl of the uh, album when it comes out. Uh, there's a couple of demos from from the demo sessions uh, of uh, Chaos and Bloom, which we've recorded. But um, yeah, I, I sort of just wrote that song during the pandemic. I was I was in my house and uh, I sent it off to Craig and he played drums in his basement on it. And, um, and I brought it in and it was sort of like a very straight ahead rock song, um, which oddly reminded me of Huey Lewis. I thought it was like sort of weird, uh, the vibe that the song took and, uh, I brought it in and, uh, in the middle, I had sort of like this sort of spacey sort of section, sort of synthesizer kind of spacey section, which popped back into the third verse. And, uh, and John came up with like this, uh, I don't even know what, I don't know if it's salsa, I don't know what the hell it is. Some kind of like, uh, just like departure from the song for a few moments in the middle, which uh, gave it a really cool vibe. So yeah, you know, um, yeah, it that came uh, together in a really interesting way. But it, it, it's really cool to listen to kind of the demo next to the actual song itself. I'm, I'm sort of glad they're coming out that way because you can sort of see, you know, where it went and how the process sort of happened, you know, once John joined the mix, it's cool. Yeah. Well, well when is that going to be released? Um, the vinyl version of the record? Well, uh, yeah, are, are, are you familiar with what's going on in the world of vinyl right now? Like as far as manufacturing it takes forever. 
the norm. Yeah, yeah. It's nine nine month average right now. That's for Warner Brothers, man. Oh wow! Like I can't I can't imagine what it's like. You know, for like you know, I mean, last time we did a show in a knife record was uh, for those of you who don't know, they're on my record label. Um, uh, last time we did a show in a knife record, uh, it took probably seven months and that was three years ago and it's only gotten worse i guess because people want vinyl again now so uh so they said that it'll be out sometime before christmas so i would imagine november ish probably well yeah well, that's yeah that's... but they are yeah but the uh, artwork is going to look amazing on this one i'm really excited to see you i'm really excited to see the lp cover you know yeah so, that's what one thing i wanted to mention about uh Chaos yeah. Blue is the artwork is incredible for that i mean they're they're every, every aspect of that record is just mind-blowing i'm from the songs the artwork everything is great with with that record yeah that's a, a local guy chuck tingley from uh buffalo he's uh really making some waves right now and he uh he did our uh you should be happy album cover uh, right. for us, which was a piece that he had already um, that we uh, saw and loved, you know? Uh, so we asked him if we could use it, uh, but this record, we actually brought him in to uh, uh, do the, all the package design and, and uh, you know, obviously do the uh, pencil sketch, which is, he, he sent us a photograph. We, <laughs> he's an amazing guy, man. Like he staged that whole photo in a photo or that whole cover in a photograph first before wow. he drew it. Yeah. And sent it to us. And we were like, wow, this is so cool, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I look forward to uh, working with him more for sure. He is, he's, uh, he'll be at a, a painting live at music is art too. September 10th. So. Yeah. I, I, I've been saving music as art for the very end of the, the interview to talk about. So <laughs> I, I, I guess uh, we, we've reached that point right now. Um, but, but I guess I also want to talk about the, uh, but before we do that, just briefly, um, I want to say congratulations on the 1 million streams on Spotify of Iris. I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible. 1 billion. That's, that's insane. And I know it's not just you and Johnny, you know, listening to it over and over again. By any means, <laughs> yeah, I have it on repeat. I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I bought a, a, a energy plant uh, outside of Niagara <laughs> Falls. It's a whole building full of computers that are just like tapping Iris on Spotify. No, um, yeah, that's a trip, man. I was, I was most surprised about the bands that aren't on that list. Like, I was shocked. Like, you know, you would, you know, these huge names, but. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's well. Yeah, I mean that's a that, that's a crazy thing, right? I mean, I know about it more because uh, because people, are, you know, like you are saying, congrats, <laughs> congratulations, you know, like to us, it's just like ah, whatever. I gotta I gotta be in Philly today, you know, like uh, you know, that's really what it feels like out here, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, you, you know, it's like I always say, like when you're when things are going great, you know, you're so busy, you know, you, you, you have to like actually take a minute to stop and go, <laughs> you know, smell the roses for a second and go, Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. I guess that's fabulous. Isn't it? You know, like, you know, wow, yeah. our numbers, are, you know, our ticket numbers are better than 98, you know, than they were in 98, you know, wow. Okay. I should like, let that like ruminate in here for a minute, you know, to, balance out the other stuff that's going on in the world you know um yeah you can sometimes you got to stop man because you're just so busy you know but but like i said it's uh it's an amazing thing um you know and it just goes to show you know like uh you know like it's crazy how many like young people are at these shows now like it was not that trust me man it was not that way five years ago like you know i mean like we were you know comfortably i felt like we were comfortably headed down that path you know i didn't want to we didn't want to but it sort of started feeling that way but like i don't know man when tiktok kind of like like we we've somehow gotten an amazing presence on tiktok you know like uh, it's not because of us you know like i mean we might throw something up there every once in a while but we're most not not i mean we're most certainly not like working at it you know like uh but you know you know, Dua Lipa and uh, Lizzo and 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 Doja Cat and all these 
folks are singing Iris and like just those three people, there's probably 18 million impressions on uh, oh. TikTok, you know, like, and that's not a bunch of, it's, it's not, that's not only a bunch of housewives sitting at home. Like that's like, you know, vital young, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I use this word and I don't mean it in a weird way, impressionable kids, you know, that are, you know, their, their, their musical vocabulary is being established still, you know, and, and, uh, you know, a lot of these kids, you know, I, I probably talked with you about this before, like a lot of these kids, you know, heard these songs, you know, sitting in the back seat of their parents' car when they were growing up, you know, like I heard American Pie, you know, like I heard, you know, uh, No Time Left For You, you know, you know, like by the Guess Who or, you know, any of these songs, you know, that when they come on the radio now, they're touching my heart, man. I can tell you they are, you know, um, yeah. you know, I put them on when I'm feeling fucked up, you know, like, you know, because like it brings me back to that place, you know, that like makes me feel safe, you know, like strapped in and so, somebody's going to worry about whether I eat that night, and what I eat that night, you know, and whether or not I'm warm when I go to bed, you know, like, you know, people, that's a feeling that people get and it, music's so powerful, man. If you can link them to that feeling, it's like, I don't know. I can't even, I can't even talk about how, how powerful that is. You know, I, I can't even, I can't even use the the right word to explain it, but like, you know, we're seeing it now. So sometimes three generations deep, dude, it's crazy. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like, you know, obviously some of these songs meant something to these people because like there's three generations of them, you know, standing in front of us hugging, you know, it's like, what do I say? It's just, it's crazy, man. I love it. Yeah. I, yeah, it. I, I mean, I, I, really feel that the Goo Goo Dolls at this point are more popular than you've ever been. Yeah, it's wild. It's crazy. And it just, it. it's just a matter of time before the stadium tour comes. <laughs> I wouldn't hold your breath for that one, my friend. But uh, no, man, I, there's a few things you, I, I wouldn't hold your breath for. I wouldn't hold your breath for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. I wouldn't hold your breath for a stadium tour. And I wouldn't hold your breath for a, a hip hop record. <laughs> well maybe the hip-hop record but the other two I, I don't know the rock and roll hall of fame would be a complete joke but i mean there's a lot of people they haven't inducted yet but i mean i i mean who has more hits than the google dolls i mean that's insane to think i'm not even sure but we we talked about that last interview and that so uh i, I don't want to spend more time on that so let's let's end the interview now with the greatest music festival ever that's going to be coming to the buffalo river works on september 10th um Right in, right in the heart of downtown Buffalo, New York. I, it, I've, I've been to many. I, I think I went to the first festival that, that you had 20 years ago. This is the 20th anniversary. And it's come a long way. It absolutely has. And, um, you know, I just want you to reflect briefly on, you know, from like, you know, day one. Did you expect this to become this like huge festival that, you know, would, you know, everybody would like circle on their calendar and it would be their highlight of their summer? I think ideally... Uh, after the first year, we hoped that the Allentown people would go, you know what? We love you guys. And this was a great idea. Let's do this every year. And we would have two state. And, and if that would have happened, we would have two stages attached to the Allentown festival today. I will guarantee you that, but that's not the way it went. And, um, you know, thanks to that situation and us reaching out and asking people to help out you know, to help out the cause, we discovered the energy that drives the whole organization. Um, you know, uh, there was a thread of people that uh, were willing to really help out, you know, and really like lend their time and their energies to doing something that felt like a little bit bigger than themselves and and uh, in the arts community you know at that point 20 years ago you know let's face it there wasn't a lot of cash really floating around buffalo so you know i felt like it was up to folks like us to you know remind people you know hey man you know it's like you know we're here you know the scene is vital in this town 
you know, and no one's really like paying attention. You know, there's so many musicians and so many artists and, you know, there were a hundred thousand people in my neighborhood and nobody was allowed to be there. And I was like, this is crazy. It doesn't make sense to me. And so when we provided, all we provided was a little patch of a parking lot. That's all we did. And we said, look, we know that some of you guys can't afford. We're not going to let you sell anything. You know, first year, we didn't let anybody, any of the artists sell anything. We didn't, you know, we weren't trying to take money from them or anything, but we didn't charge anybody to set up. We didn't charge anybody to come in. We didn't, um, you know, the bands all perform for free. You know, we, you know, we took care of the production, you know, the minimal production that was there. But like, as I said, from that energy, you know, we discovered that there were so many other things we could do. So we started, you know, collecting instruments and we started, you know, running workshops and, and doing, doing uh, assemblies at schools. You know, we involved ourselves with a bunch of uh, not-for-profits in town and uh, we're delivering messages, you know, through assemblies at the schools with bands and, you know, we just all of a sudden realized there was like a place for channeling those energies. You know, now we have the Alliance and, you know, which is like become an amazing thing. And, you know, um, uh, we ran our first uh, 716 Music Expo this year, which 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 we plan on, on uh, doing for the next few years and jazz workshops and and uh, mentoring and and uh oh my god I, I could just go on so many so many things you know that have happened over the years but it's all in the spirit of what this festival is and that's the fact that anything you want to see you could probably catch here because everybody's invited to be involved you know um we had an unbelievable amount of entries this year so it was really tough um but uh you know, if you want to show up with your guitar, you know, we more, we are more than happy to give you a little corner to set up and play your guitar in, you know, um, no one is discouraged from performing at, at this event, you know, if they can just make it happen and busk, you know, so the idea is that everybody is involved, um, you know, dancing and performance art and music and, and, and artists and DJs and, you know, blues players and, and and hip hop artists and all these things come together to make one thing that's a little bit bigger than itself. And that was the idea from the very beginning. You know, once we realized that you could harness this thing and, uh, you know, we don't bring in huge headliners, you know, we don't do any of those things because um, this is truly a celebration, you know, of the, of the creativity and, um, you know, the uh, uh, creative will you know, of folks in Buffalo, you know, to get together and, you know, do some fun together. So, yeah. The one thing about the festival is that you can go there like the moment it opens, like what it opens like at 8 a.m. I mean, it, 11. It opens 11. 11. 11. Yeah. Okay. You get there at 11 and you can stay there till like, you know, midnight. And there's not a moment that's boring. I mean, there's always something, a band to watch or something going on. And it's, it's really a, a great time. And uh, I mean, it could almost be like a weekend long. You could almost start it on like a Friday and end it on a, a Sunday. I mean, probably now. With I have su I have suggested that, but my board of directors is a uh, is a uh, staunchly against making <laughs> it. It was a, it it was originally a two day festival. The first four years, it was two days, and then uh, yeah, we uh, pared it down to one. When if you, when when we left the Allentown, uh, the the bo the bosom of the Allentown Art Festival. Yeah. Yeah. I, I often wonder too. I remember when, you know, the controversy with that and I, I thought it was complete bullshit. It was like, how dare they, you know, but I, yeah. I don't want, you know, well, I think they did. I think they did something that was actually pretty advantageous to the organization because I don't think, like I said at the beginning, you know, when we first started talking about this, I'm not sure I would have gone out with the fervor that we did to make this a legitimate thing and a legitimate 501c3, you know, like I think I would have just been happy throwing a couple stages up next to the Allentown Art Festival every year. And who knows what that would have grown into, but I would have been happy with that because that's all we really wanted at the beginning was just a little bit of representation in our neighborhood, you know? Yeah. 
because it because it, cause it's our neighborhood damn it um, right right on <laughs> yeah right on. you know but but i think that you know it, it it sort of forced us to stand on our own two feet you know and um so uh i i i actually really appreciate that that happened yeah, I, I'm the only time I've ever been to the Allen's Art, Art Festival is when I was walking through it to go to your festival. I mean, that yeah, was the only, and I'm yeah. thinking like there's probably other people like that also. You yeah, know, that, I mean, and, and, I think it's an amazing thing, though. I really do. Like, like when I was a kid, like that was positively the first time, like you know, I, uh, you know, saw hippies, you know, <laughs> sitting around. You know, it, was, it would have been the '60s, probably '60 maybe 70, you know, you know, like when I have recollections, I was born in 64. So, you know, but I remember seeing, you know, kids sitting around with long hair and guitars and smoking weed and stuff. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I know that this is nothing that I know of. So there's something out there, you know, yeah. like I can remember having that feeling like, okay, you know what, man, this is not what I'm being served at home. You know, like there's, you know, <laughs> you know, there's a whole, there's many pages this, of this menu I haven't seen yet, you know, and I really need to see what's out there, you know, and I can remember as a young kid feeling that way. So once again, I think I owe more to that festival than, than I ever realized, you know, because, um, you know, even though we had, you know, a, a, a little bit of trouble at the beginning, I think it really sort of put us in a place where, you know, we knew that we had to stand stand on our own. And um, I, I don't think we'd be here 20 years later getting ready to set up 23 stages and, you know, have a, you know, have a big, uh, you know, a, a day of excitement. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Now you're going to be there, right? I mean, you're taking oh, a week yeah. off. You're, you're taking a week off a tour, aren't you? To, to you got the, it. There? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that's going to be cool. Are, are you going to be performing on any of the stages or that? Make a guest appearance at all? Or yeah, that... I'll be doing some stuff. I, I I think I might do an old Goo Goo song with uh uh, uh with uh, some of my old punk rock friends down in. We got a skate. We have a skate park this year. Wow. So wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even get into any of that stuff. My God, some of the stuff we got going on is crazy. You got yeah. <laughs> augmented reality uh section this year where you can wow. put on headsets and try out augmented reality we got full-on wrestling schedule this year um you know, we got the bounce houses uh again this year we got uh uh p lander yellows coming from austin texas to play with oh, his wow. band yeah and do uh uh some uh, large murals chuck tingley's in doing some murals this year uh again uh jess Foles coming back from baltimore to do some more art uh, oh my God, I could go on and on. It's so crazy. Uh, Crucible 716 is coming to help us uh, curate some stuff. Hunt Gallery this year is coming to help us curate some stuff. Uh, once again, Chris Main and uh, Don Keller are, 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 are doing the uh, art in the Riverworks side. Mark Madden and Mad Tiki folks and uh, the uh, Blossom Buffalo folks are putting the, together at, uh, the... Uh, the most high art and music experience over, over in the park. Uh, we'll be over in the, in uh, Riverfront park again this year as well. Yeah. Uh, and we'll also be at the uh, two Ganson or at the Ganson street elevators uh, on the corner by the uh, uh, general mills factory. Uh, we'll have two stages over there as well and a bunch yeah. of bending and stuff. So yeah, it's going to be uh it's going to be a big one this year, man. You know, 20th anniversary. We, uh, we've extended the, uh, uh, infringement in the silos, the uh, refringement in the silos. We've extended that into the rail barn, which is next door. We're going to have a mapped rooms, uh, very similar to that Van Gogh experience that you saw uh, uh, out at the, uh, I think it's the Eastern Hills Mall. Eastern where Hills, it was. Yeah. 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 Uh, very similar to that with uh, live uh, electronic acts performing in there. So yeah, man, just um, so much going on. Yeah. And uh, I'll also be doing some uh, stuff with uh uh, my favorite uh, Buffalo Kiss cover band can kiss this too. Yeah. Right right. Helping those guys out too. So, yeah. So I'll be up there a few times throughout the day for sure. But yeah. uh, I'm going to try to keep my voice this year. We got a show two days later. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Well, I, I give you a lot of credit for everything you, you put into that festival and what you've done for the community. And, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of thanks for it, but seriously, I mean, at, for, for the Buffalo music 
community. I mean, you are the, you are the mayor of it by, by far, and nah, by that you know, nah. kind of like everyone goes to. So, so thank you for that, and uh, thank you for this interview. I, I really appreciate your time. I mean, you're on tour. I mean, you could be doing anything else, but you're talking to me. So, so thank you. I I, I do appreciate it, and uh, really looking. Forward I'm about to. I'm about to do a voiceover for uh, we're doing a podcast right now with the Buffalo News. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. GCR Audio and uh, uh, Music is Art and Buffalo News Gusto. We, we're doing a weekly podcast. So I'm actually just about to cut all the voiceover stuff for the podcast. Uh, Rod Bonner was on last week and uh, oh, wow. Fernway was on the week before that. And uh, Omega Red will be on next week. So. Yeah. How do you find the time, Robbie? I'm serious. How do you find the time to do all this? I mean, <laughs> and everything you do is quality too. It's like you know, Ugh, most like, of it. <laughs> I, I, I'm hitting a solid 87, but that's good. <laughs> that's B plus, man. That's good. That's going to get you in the University of Buffalo with that average. So hey, there you go. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> all right, dude. It's always great talking with you, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you again very soon, uh, September 10th to uh, September 24th, hopefully, and. Uh, Best of luck with everything. All right. Kick cool, ass brother. tonight. And we'll All see right. you. All right. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.